Hey guys, it's Joe here from Red Phoenix Rises, and today we are going to talk about, well, one of the biggest straw men that I see all the fucking time from the left. And we're going to look at it from the damage report talking about Mike Pompeo. I know, it's it's totally unprecedented that part of the Young Turks network would use massive straw men against Republicans. I get it. But let's jump right into it. It is admittedly way too early to be thinking about who hypothetically might be running in the Republican primary next time. But some <laughs> people make it abundantly clear that that's what they're planning for. If you are one of those lucky individuals who's been following Secretary Pompeo on Twitter, they have just been posting like PR stuff for him the last couple, like it has nothing to do with his job at all. So here's an example, and you tell me, what this really has to do with being Secretary of State. Here's one of the last tweets that will ever go out from his time as Secretary of State. Wokeism, multiculturalism, all the isms, they're not who America is. They distort our glorious founding and what this country is all about. Our enemies stoke these divisions because they know they make us weaker. Which is a different quote than the quote in the image, which is Censorship, wokeness, political correctness at all points in one direction. Authoritarianism cloaked as moral righteousness. Well, a cloak of moral righteousness is really what that tweet is all about. Francesca, what do you think? I mean, I woke up to this Nazi-ish. Like, I am sorry. Like, you, like, oh my God. What I think this means is that when he does announce his run in 2024, he will use the N word. Okay, I'd like to start off by saying that she is even less tolerable than when she's shelling for the Qatari government. Like it, because if he it, doesn't, it's authoritarianism. If he, yeah, if he doesn't, then it's just all this political correctness. Exactly, it is not being a Nazi is Nazism. <laughs> Do you see how this works? Like this, I mean, what an embattled majority that we have elevated and we have we have diluted an already majoritarian like white straight you know elite you know a uh, uh, cabal like we've we've they have diluted everybody that like white genocide is real and that you not being able to say all your favorite slurs mm -hmm. also why do you have favorite slurs is somehow like is 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 a uh, what is authoritarianism? So look, this is the argument that they're making, and I hear it all the time. You just want free speech so that you can say slurs, and you think that people taking away your slurs is the worst thing in the world. And why can't you just be nice to people? I mean, it's so ridiculous. It honestly sounds like a straw man, but I hear it so often. I know it's not. I know they're actually saying this, that they think the only thing that we're worried about is that we aren't allowed to say our slurs anymore. And look, to be abundantly clear, if you don't support free speech for your worst enemy, you don't support free speech. So if you really want to use your slurs, go ahead. But that is far from the only thing we're upset about. In fact, I wouldn't even say it's what anywhere near a majority of pro-free speech people are worried about. In fact, off the top of my head, let me list a handful of examples that have nothing to do with slurs. So here's a really good example. Activision censored a stream and punished an esports player from Hearthstone. Uh, something I know absolutely nothing about, by the way. Uh, for saying, liberate Hong Kong, the revolution of our times. Now, I know the Chinese Communist Party might consider liberate Hong Kong to be a slur. But, you know, that's kind of the problem with just insisting this is all about slurs. You could really claim anything as a slur if you want to go all the way down to that level. That's why you have to protect all speech, and especially offensive speech. Matt Taylor, a scientist at the European Space Agency and largely responsible for landing a probe on an asteroid, was publicly ridiculed for wearing the wrong shirt. You know, a shirt that had scantily clad women on it. But hey, you know, those are all right-wing bigots or something. What about someone the left might appreciate? J.K. Rowling has been canceled repeatedly because J.K. Rowling doesn't like trannies, despite being in every other way a massive prog. And presented without comment, let's just remember this.
But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure the only thing that Pompeo is upset about is the fact that he can't say the N-word on national TV. I mean, like, yeah. I can't believe this stuff. Like, the, the idea, and let's just, let's just name it. Multiculturalism and being against that, that is the stuff of far right pseudo populist movements all throughout Europe. This is Steve Bannon stuff. This is, you know, yeah. Nigel Farage stuff. This is uh, Golden Dawn in Greece stuff. This is all the stuff. And like, that's in Europe. That's in Europe that's like been experiencing more waves of migration now. Whereas the United States, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, man. It was like, we are a melting pot. We are <laughs> a little mixed salad. You're a tomato. I'm avocado. Like, it's just like it was. Well, the melting pot analogy implies that there's a certain amount of homogeneity to the nation. Maybe not racially, but culturally. As in, anyone is welcome to come here, but they have to become an American when they come here. And ironically, of all people, the left hates the melting pot analogy the most, because it doesn't encourage literally the opposite thing, which is multiculturalism. Multiculturalism being, you know, everyone comes here, and then they just set up their own communities that are their own little uh, native groups that have their own populations and their own separate and distinct cultures from America. Now, of course, the left and the fascists effectively agree that culture is indistinguishable from race. And so they both dislike the melting pot because you can't distinguish culture from race. And so the cultures and by default, the races need to be kept apart because otherwise they'll damage each other in some way. Just the subtle nods to racialism of the left, again, what a shock. But yeah, keep pretending for like 30 seconds that you're suddenly in favor of the melting pot, up until you remember that the melting pot is going to require people to integrate into the American culture. Is that a real song or did you just make that up? I just made it up. But like- Good freestyle. Dude, right. I'm telling you, I multicultural freestyle whenever you want. So. <laughs> That's not what this show is about, okay? <laughs> your freestylisms. Yeah, no, you're 100% right though. Um, the saying multiculturalism is not what America is about is sure, it's like the intro to a Tucker Carlson monologue. But in terms of actual politicians, that's Steve King. Like five years yes. ago, were there four Republicans that would have just tweeted, no, I'm against multiculturalism? Yep. But now, that's just ground floor, I wanna run in the primary. So I need to let you know that I think we should only have one culture. Any of them's fine, I'm sure. Just pick one of them at random, but no, that's- No, there is one particular American culture that is superior to the rest. It's the one that says, you know, fuck the government telling me what to do. It's the one that says, I want to go to America to be free and to build a better life for myself. It's the American dream, the American ethos, that core. And you can bring anything else you want to from your culture into that one. That's fine. If you want to bring your food, your song, your dance, whatever. And look, that culture, that core of not just American culture, but of American exceptionalism itself, predates America. The earliest settlers from the Netherlands and Britain and France all believed in, to some degree, these ideas. Did we always perfectly live up to them? No, of course not. But over time, as more and more people came in from more and more places around the world, they have been integrated into that culture. They have become a part of it. This is a place where all men come to be free. But when you start contradicting that core, that becomes a problem. But he really wants to imply that there's like a white cultural thing to this, that this is for white people, by white people, and that we think the white culture is superior, but no. This is about preserving the American ethos itself. It doesn't matter what color the people who believe it are at all. And wokeism. Because the Republican, Republicans, I'm going to say, do they encapsulate 99% of the actual uses of the word woke in the last year? It's like yes. they're the only persons that are talking about that. Okay, so I've seen this formula before. They used it with political correctness a few years back. Oh, well, it's only the right of whoever talks about political correctness anymore. It's not really a problem. So here is the typical lefty strategy. Invent a word or an idea, like political correctness. They didn't come up with the term political correctness. They just kind of started doing it, and then we called it political correctness. Uh, now, they invented the word and the concept of woke. Uh, and then in both cases, we attacked it. And then they simply changed it up a little bit and, you know, 
Oh, well, uh, that's not our word anymore. That's their word now. So, you know, it's a, it's a ridiculous straw man to say that we're always, you know, getting woke over here because we don't use the word woke anymore. But that's not what we're doing. We're attacking the idea that the word woke represents. We're attacking political correctness, the idea. And the idea hasn't gone away. You just keep rebranding it every time that the American public catches on and it becomes incredibly unpopular. Hey, that's another play that the fascists like to use. Holy shit, you guys are like basically the same. Or more like mirror images or, or maybe like a horseshoe shaped thing. But yeah, um, get ready. Get ready for that primary because we had some really nasty debates in 2016. Ooh. You know, like who believes in global warming? Would you let someone die on the street? You know, because they don't have health insurance. But they are going to be even more explicitly fighting each other in a battle royale to prove how heartless, cruel, fascistic, racist yeah. they are. Hey, look, this is a straw man so old that I made a campaign poster for it like two years ago. Look, I'm glad that you have nothing to throw at us except for the same straw men over and over again. That, you know, we are just secretly the worst people to ever live. Uh, and we are both incredibly covert about it and super open about it. I mean, all we ever talk about is how we want to kill people. It could never possibly be that we think that our solutions would just actually work. No, the goal is always to kill more poor people uh, and to make sure that the, the race is kept pure and well, whatever the fuck else straw man you can come up with. Get ready for Jake Tapper to be like, so with the wokeness, um, are we talking, <laughs> would you agree with Secretary Pompeo that they need to all go to uh, work camps? You know, she has just completely by mistake made a really good point there in that the media will absolutely play defense for the Democrats to the point where they will ask questions of Republicans as if the core premise that we are actually just evil is true. So I wouldn't be shocked if that is a legitimate question in 2024, uh, even though no Republican is going to propose throwing people into work camps. Because here's a little secret. We're not actually just evil. Go. Like, like this is the, the normalization that is coming from the US media. I'm like, do not let this happen, y'all. I'm, I'm still not over the ways that mainstream media normalized Trump and every single debate was, yeah, but what do you think of Trump's idea? Like, this fool should not be running. This fool is a joke. The wall, so. But it'll happen. It'll it'll yeah. happen. And and I unless we get better executives, <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. But yeah. then nothing's gonna change. Oh God, it's gonna get dark. It's gonna get so dark. Just ready. Like we've moved into a into a time of of more possibility. But all oh, the right's gonna lose it. The, what the media is gonna be saying, what their politicians are gonna say. Like Lauren Bober and Marjorie Taylor Greene got elected. There are so many Republicans that want to duplicate that right now. But this is why we need multiple parties. This is why we need proportional representation. This is why, you know, when you say the Golden Dawn or you say these European like fascistic, you know, parties, like, yeah, but they have like proportional representation. They have parties, they have multiple parties, not just two. So really the onus is on Republicans. What are they gonna do? They're gonna cut cut these crazies loose? They're gonna form a new party? Is Bloomberg gonna lead the way? <sighs> I mean, honestly, I, though, this is a yeah. we're in a very interesting moment. I had forgotten about Bloomberg's run. Look, if you think Pompeo is the craziest, you have no idea what you're up against. Pompeo is effectively an establishment neocon with effectively a default Trump base just because he was Trump's secretary of state. He's really nothing that impressive to them if they were to actually look at him on a policy level. Like he's basically George Bush with a better PR team. So I wouldn't call him some great Republican. I'm really not fond of Pompeo, but I'm also not going to go out of my way to call the man some kind of fucking fascist. There are real fascists out there, and they made up a, a small but very vocal portion of Trump's base. But Pompeo isn't it. And to act like all of a sudden Republicans are just all fascists is ridiculous, and it's not going to do you any better now than it did last time you tried this. And I mean, Pompeo isn't even wrong in that tweet either. You guys are very authoritarian. You really like to punish people for thinking wrong, for acting wrong. And it's not for saying the N-word, no matter how much you want to pretend that that's all this is. And I don't think the American public is going to put up with this kind of shit from either side. So, you know, 
maybe reconsider this tactic a little bit. Or, you know, at least consider being a little bit more honest with yourselves and with your audience, because if you really think that Republicans are just the, the secret fascist organization, uh, you should try to meet a Republican at some point in your life. But that's it for today, guys. I will see you all next time, and I don't know, like and subscribe or something.